Hello students, class 9 science, chapter 3, atoms and molecules. In this video, I am going to explain the answers of in-text questions of NCRT textbook. Question given on page number 32. In a reaction, 5.3 gram of sodium carbonate reacted with 6 gram of acetic acid. The products were 2.2 gram of carbon dioxide, 0.9 gram water and 8.2 gram of sodium acetate. Show that these observations are in agreement with the law of conservation of mass. And this equation is also given. Sodium carbonate plus acetic acid gives sodium acetate plus carbon dioxide plus water. According to law of conservation of mass, mass of reactants should be equal to mass of products. Okay, that's why first we will calculate the mass of reactants. That is total mass before the reaction. And reactants are sodium carbonate and acetic acid. And their mass is 5.3 plus 6 and this is 11.3 gram. In the same way, total mass after the reaction, that is mass of products. Products are sodium acetate, carbon dioxide and H2. Add the masses of these substances. Then again, this will come to 11.3 gram. You can see this is equal to this one. Since total mass before the reaction is equal to total mass after the reaction, hence the given observations are in agreement with the law of conservation of mass. Next question. Hydrogen and oxygen combine in the ratio of 1 is to 8 by mass to form water. What mass of oxygen gas would be required to react completely with 3 gram of hydrogen gas? Given that the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen by mass to form water is 1 is to 8. Then mass of oxygen gas required to react completely with 1 gram of hydrogen gas is 8 gram according to this ratio. Therefore, the mass of oxygen gas required to react completely with 3 gram of hydrogen gas is 8 into 3 is equal to 24 gram. Which postulate of Dalton's atomic theory is the result of the law of conservation of mass? You can see its answer is the postulate of Dalton's atomic theory which is a result of a law of conservation of mass is atoms are indivisible particles which can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. Next question. Which postulate of Dalton's atomic theory can explain the law of definite proportions? And this is the relative number and kind of atoms in a given compound remains constant. This postulate explains the law of definite proportion. Next question. Define atomic mass unit. Simple definition is asked. Mass unit equal to exactly one twelfth. The mass of one atom of carbon 12 is called one atomic mass unit. It is written as U. Why is it not possible to see an atom with naked eyes? The size of an atom is so small that it is not possible to see it with naked eyes. Also, the atoms of an element does not exist independently. Okay. Next question. Write down the formula of these following compounds. And to write the formula, you must know the valency of cations and anions come to sodium oxide. You can say this is sodium. Its valence is 1. Oxide valence is 2. If you interchange these, then we will get Na2. The same way aluminium chloride. This is Al. Valence is 3. This is chloride. Valence is 1. Again, if you interchange, then we will get the formula AlCl3. Sodium sulfide. Okay, this is sodium sulfide. Sodium Na valence is 1, sulfide as valence is 2. Again, you interchange, then we will get this is Na2S. Magnesium hydroxide, magnesium, symbol is Mg. Valence is 2. Hydroxide OH, valence is 1. Again, 
interchange this we can say this is oh will come two times that's why this is oh put in the bracket and will two will be written as a subscript that is mg oh twice write down the names of compounds represented by the following formula al2so4 thrice this is for aluminium this is for sulfate that's why aluminium sulfate cacl2 calcium chloride k2so4 potassium sulfate kno3 potassium nitrate caco3 calcium carbonate this calcium and this is co3 represent carbonate what is meant by the term chemical formula chemical formula of a compound means the symbolic representation of the composition of a compound from the chemical formula of a compound we can know the number and kinds of atoms of different elements that constitute the compound next question how many atoms are present in a h2s molecule in a h2s molecule three atoms are present how three you can say that is two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of sulfur in case of po4 three minus i total number of atoms are five how it is one of phosphorus and four of oxygen in this way five atoms are present calculate the molecular massage of H2, O2, Cl2, CO2, CH4, C2H6, C2H4, NH3, CS3, OH. To find out the molecular masses of these molecules, we must know the atomic masses which are present in these molecules. Okay. Molecular mass of H2. That is, there are two atom of hydrogen. That's why this is two multiplied by atomic mass of hydrogen. Then we will get two U. Molecular mass of O2, 2 into atomic mass of oxygen and atomic mass of oxygen is 16. That's why 2 into 16, 32 U. Molecular mass of Cl2, 2 into atomic mass of Cl, 2 into 35.5, that is 71 U. Molecular mass of carbon dioxide. Now, in this case, first atomic mass of carbon, then plus. Okay. There are two atoms of oxygen. That's why 2 into atomic mass of oxygen. This is 12 plus 2 into 16, 12 plus 32, that is 44 U. Molecular mass of CH4, atomic mass of carbon, and there are 4 atoms of hydrogen, that's why 4 into atomic mass of hydrogen, this is 12 plus 4 into 1, that is 16. In the same way, we can find out molecular mass of C2H6, 2 atom of carbons multiplied by atomic mass of carbon plus 6 into atomic mass of hydrogen put the value 2 into 12 plus 6 into 1 and 24 plus 6 30 u molecular mass of c2h4 2 into atomic mass of carbon plus 4 into atomic mass of hydrogen and if you put the value and solve it we will get this is 28 u molecular mass of nh3 that is atomic mass of nitrogen plus 3 into atomic mass of hydrogen. If you solve it, 17 U. Next, molecular mass of CH3OH. Now, in this case, we can say there is a one atom of carbon. That's why atomic mass of carbon. And total number of hydrogen atoms are 4. 3 here and 1 is this. That's why 4 into atomic mass of hydrogen. And there is a one atom of oxygen. That's why plus atomic mass of oxygen. Put the value, solve it, we will get 32U. Okay. Calculate the formula unit masses of zinc oxide, that is ZNO, Na2O, K2CO3, and atomic masses are given for zinc, sodium, potassium, carbon, and oxygen. Same way, you have to add the atomic masses of atoms present in these formula units. Formula unit mass of zinc oxide, that is atomic mass of zinc plus atomic mass of oxygen, 65 plus 16, that is 81U. Formula unit mass of Na2O, 2 into atomic mass of sodium plus atomic mass of oxygen, put the value, add these, we will get 62U. The same way, formula unit mass of K2CO3, 2 into atomic mass of potassium plus atomic mass of carbon plus 3 into atomic mass of oxygen, put the value. 
solve it. 138U. Next question. If one mole of carbon atoms weighs 12 gram. Okay, we can say this is the molar mass of carbon. What is the mass in gram of one atom of carbon? Is it clear? It is mass of one mole of carbon atom is given and mass of one atom of carbon is asked. So we can see in question that is given one mole of carbon atom weighs 12 gram. It means mass of one mole of carbon atom is equal to 12 gram. And as we know, in one mole, how many atoms are present? That is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. That's why we can say mass of 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 number of carbon atom, that is 12 gram. Okay. Then we can say mass of one atom of carbon, 12 divided by 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. If you solve it, we will get this 1.9926 into 10 to the power minus 21 gram. Which has more number of atoms? 100 grams of sodium or 100 grams of iron? We have to find out the number of, first we will find out the number of atoms. Okay. That is mass is given and atomic mass is also given. So first we can calculate the number of atoms okay atomic mass of sodium is given molar mass of sodium is also given 23 gram then we can find out 23 gram of sodium contains okay that is this is one mole this is the mass of one mole of sodium that is one mole of sodium contain 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 number of atoms that's why we can say 100 gram of sodium contains 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 divided by 23 multiplied by 100 and this will come 2.6182 into 10 to the power 24 number of atoms. In the same way for iron we can calculate okay 56 gram this is the molar mass of iron 56 gram of iron contains 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 number of atoms. That's why you can see 100 gram of iron contains 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 divided by 56 multiplied by 100 and this will come 1.0753 into 10 to the power 24. Now out of these two values this is 1 and this is 1 which is greater. You can say definitely this is greater. That's why answer is 100 grams of sodium contain more number of atoms than 100 gram of iron. Okay. You can also find out without this calculation, you can also find out its answer. Actually, mass of both the atoms which is given this is the same. Okay. And molar mass of sodium is 23 and molar mass of iron is 56. We can say this 23 is less. This 23 is less. That's why we can say in 100 gram of sodium, more number of atoms will be present. Okay. By observing these values given without solving this, you can also write the answer of this question. Thank you.